All right. So Ministry of Zulfikar Ali Bhutto, we are done with um, all the ministries of Yahya Khan. I did ask you guys to keep the battles on hold for a while because we will be starting both the 65 and the 71 war together. By this time, Pakistan had been into these two wars with India, the war of 1965 and the war of 1971. The 65 war uh, was, sorry, both of these were uh, not directly against India. The first one was obviously 65 war was uh, directly against India, but the second one was with East Pakistan and India was involved in that backing up East Pakistan. So we were indirectly fighting with India as well in the 71 war. We're going to get to these wars later on, but for now, just know that Pakistan had been uh, to these two wars and Zulfikar Ali Bhutto's ministry was sort of a very interesting time in the politics of Pakistan. Number one, because there were a lot of development projects that you'll see took place during this ministry um, that are very, very important for Pakistan. For example, the nationalization, denationalization of industries, the constitution, the constitution that we follow till date in the, in, in the country is a 1970s constitution and, and it was introduced during this time period. So a lot of interesting political developments have taken place during this tenure. This is why it's very important. Secondly, right after Zulfikar Ali Bhutto's time period, Pakistan experienced a dictatorship rule, a military rule, a martial law uh, of Ziaul Haq. So uh, this is why we'll see how all of the events turned out to be, how uh, the, the, the tenure of Zulfikar Ali Bhutto actually uh, paved the way for a martial law tenure in Pakistan. Okay, so... All right, so guys, number one, you can expect a question on who was Al-Fagali Bhutto and all the important contributions, for example, the simple agreement, the constitution, okay? So Zulfiqar Ali Bhutto ruled for a total of seven years, six to seven years, and he was the president as well as the prime minister of Pakistan for the first three years, from 71 to 73, he was the president of Pakistan. And for the next four years, he was the prime minister. Uh, you need to be very careful while writing the designations. Aksar bache karte hain, ke they get confused. Ke president konta, prime minister konta. Please study these designations very, very carefully. Zulfagar Ali Bhutto was the president for the first three years and prime minister for the next four years. All right. Uh, he was the foreign minister during the tenure of Ayub Khan, but he was made the president right after that. Um, all right. And similarly, similar agreement was the first constitution, uh, sorry, first uh, uh, contribution. Uh, it was a, a very important uh, contribution in terms of the uh, foreign policy because this agreement was signed with India with the Indian Prime Minister Indira Gandhi. Uh, the main the, the main uh, reasons behind this agreement were number one because of the 71 war. Pakistan and India were indirectly in a war in 1971 and it was important for both of the countries to sit together at a table and to resolve their conflicts. Uh, I'm sure you guys would have studied world history. You guys must have an idea as to how the political developments take place right after wars. Has anybody studied about World War I, World War II? I mean, if you have, you would have seen how the, when, when countries get into war and when the wars are over, there is always a peace treaty or a, or a, or a sort of an agreement that takes place between all the fighting nations to get to a conclusion. Wars generally don't really have a conclusion, but this is the reason why these treaties are important. Similar agreement was sort of a resolution to the 1971 war. Uh, Pakistan and India were finally on the table. This is one of the success of both of the countries as well. 93,000 Pakistani prisoners were released. Uh, this was one of the agreements that India will release 93,000 Pakistani prisoners. Uh, but Pakistan will also have to avoid discussing Kashmir issue on any international forum. So Pakistan promised India that the Kashmir issue will be discussed with India. It will not be um, taken to any international forum, for example, the ICJ International Court of Justice to the United Nations. All right. So this issue will only be resolved on a bilateral basis with India, with Pakistan, and they will not involve any foreign body. This was important for India because they, because you guys already know how the Kashmir, the Kashmir territory was occupied and taking that issue to an international body would have resulted in a crisis for India, considering the fact how they occupied it initially in the first place. Uh, but again, we, we did not see any clear result, I mean, any clear um, solution from the side of United Nations as well. That is a different debate. But for now, this is what India wanted. Uh, and, uh, as a result, they freed the, these 93,000 parks and prisoners. And they also withdrew from all the illegal occupations in Sindh, Punjab and Kashmir. All right. Uh, some parts of Sindh were with India, some parts of Punjab were with Pakistan. All of the parts that were actually supposed to be with the other countries 
both of the countries withdrew from these lands. All right. So this was Singla agreement. Number two, Zulfikar Ali Bhutto introduced this Federal Security Force, FSF. Uh, the purpose of Federal Security Force was to basically maintain a law and order situation in the country. Uh, Bhutto's style of ruling was, a, you could say, very similar to a martial law rule. It's very similar to a military rule. Because you see, in, in, in a dictatorship, the dictators, they try to control the people. They try to maintain law, law and order situation by force. So Zulfikar Ali Bhutto, although he was the prime minister after being the president, his style of ruling was pretty similar to being a dictator. This federal security force, FSF, the main purpose of this force was to handle the law and order situation in Pakistan, to assess the civil administration of the country. All right. Uh, but it was obviously later abolished by Zawal Haq. So guys, here's a, here's a question for all of you. What do you guys think? Was FSF, federal security force, a good contribution? I'd really appreciate if you guys can unmute yourselves and speak up. And if you decide to say yes or no, I also want your reasons. Gee, guys. I've got an answer. Um, uh, okay, so Abdul Manas said that because it was used by Bhutto to murder political opponents. So it was in a good cont uh, uh, contribution. All right. Okay, that is one aspect of this. Okay, it was Federal Security Force was later used um, as a, I mean, um, it, it was used illegally to encounter the political opposition, to counter the political opposition. And the, most of the political opponents were also murdered uh, by the members of this force. Okay, that is a very good point. And then Daniel says that Bhutto used it for his personal interest. Daniel, if, you, if you're talking about the personal interest, you will also have to uh, maybe talk about a few of those. You need to give a few examples. Clarify that to the examiner, okay? Um, also, guys, when you respond to these questions, I'd really appreciate if you can write down the answers in the uh, public chat box instead of directly messaging these answers to me just so everybody can... Uh, know your responses. It's important to have an interactive conversation, but that is completely okay. It was used to show wrong power over public as well. Yes, definitely. The one of the political, uh, one of the uh, motives as to why FSF was established was to show this dominance over the public. To, 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 to explain, to demonstrate how strong the government was, to demonstrate the power of the government. And you cannot do that in a, in, in a, civil, a civilian government, right? In, in form of a democracy, that is absolutely not right. So guys, how will we analyze these reasons? If let's say the question says that federal, how, I mean, how do you think the federal security force was not a success? Or why do you think was a federal security force not a good measure? So you're going to, write all of these points at how it was used for the political murders of the political opponents. It was used to demonstrate power. It was used for th their own interests. So you guys also need to analyze all of these points that how are these points adding up to the failure of this force itself? Pakistan's own army was present to handle the law and order. FSF was only for the personal concern of Zimbabwe. So, okay, all right. That is also right, Isha. But you will also have to add on to it by writing about the personal personal interests what sort of interests are you talking about here um to be more specific all right you need to make your answer a little more specific here so you guys are right all of you are right uh this is why federal security force was not considered to be a good contribution and this and it became a reason for the downfall of Zulfikar Ali Bhutto okay now another very important contribution was the constitution of 1973 imposed by this government, this, uh, this this constitution gave a parliamentary form of government. If you remember the previous constitution of 1956, which was uh, presented during the time of Skandar Mirza, um, sorry, 62 and then 56, Ayub Khan and Skandar Mirza, both of the constitutions basically um, were sort of, they, they guaranteed a presidential form of government, right? This one was parliamentary. Abdurrahman, 
you're right he was executed he didn't fell from power but one of the reasons as to why he was executed was this obviously the government presented its, its reasons yeah they thought zulfikar ali bhutto was not capable of governing the country so this federal security force and the illegal usage of this force became a reason for that execution okay all right um so uh this the 73 constitution was it, it guaranteed a parliamentary form of government as opposed to all the previous constitutions of 62 and 56 you guys you guys can talk about the form of government in detail maybe by writing about how it based in uh, it, i mean it um proposed a formation of national assembly a senate um all of the islamic and political fundamental rights were guaranteed to everyone it was accepted by all the fractions the religious fractions as well as uh both of the, the other wings, uh, wings as well all right so yeah and then some of the other contributions of bhutto were um, the nationalization policy industries were nationalized the educational institutions were nationalized you can expect four mark questions on 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 these points as well maybe uh, the uh, you, you you can uh, you can expect a question on what were the industrial reforms what were the education reforms so you, you should know that generally all of the industries are nationalized because nationalization guys can you can you tell me what nationalization is and why do the governments at times think that nationalization is important nationalization is why do you think i mean first of all what nationalization is and why do you think the governments at times think it is important for the country for the economics okay i've got an answer it's important because firms are likely to exploit industries uh, uh, exploit public sorry yeah uh, it's when the government takes control of industry okay um yes so first of all nationalization is when government takes the direct control of all the industries whether private or public and all of the funding finances policies government is responsible for all of these matters uh and if we look into the reasons as to why the government think that it's important number one uh okay abdul rahman if you are saying that it is important for because firms are likely to exploit public what sort of exploitation are we talking about here are they maybe likely to i mean is inflation more likely in in in, in uh, denationalization privatization or are private industries more likely to make their own laws and not follow a general standard uh what i mean you need to be a little more specific here and this is what you need to talk about in your answers as well just don't write words generally be specific because that is when you'll be able to come up to an analysis if you think that the uh, privatized industries are more likely to exploit general public in form of heavy taxation not taxation but in in terms of the price differences the quality control um the policies that they make so government so nationalization is a solution to that in a sense that government will be able to unify standardize all the policies have a single standard for the the, the um, manufacturing procedures all right they they will impose similar taxation onto everyone on all the industries they will bring in investors they will provide funding and loans to the industries on similar standards all right so this is why this is this could be a reason as to why nationalization is important um okay guys anything else and why do you think nationalization of in educational institutions is important or was important at that time i can give you guys a hint you guys i mean if you all maybe read newspapers or watch news you will be aware of the single national curriculum that the pakistani government is trying to implement in the country these days that is sort of a, a, a an attempt to bring all of the educational institutions on a unified syllabus on a unified style of learning because 
we, we, I mean, our students in Pakistan are, I mean, they, they, they study from different boards, different telebi. All right. So, okay, for free education, yes, that is absolutely right. Uh, one of the reasons as to why the education institutions get nationalized is to implement this free for all education system. So free education system is when you can, I mean, so the, when the governments nationalize the education institutions, they're free to make their own policies. They're free to uh, bring in just a, a single curriculum. They're free to bring in a single unified style of education. And okay, there's another response and to increase the number of educated people in the country at the time so they can help country prosper by understanding, understanding policies. Okay, so that is a consequence of free for all education. Yeah to increase the literacy rate of the country. So uh, again, your point is very valid that it's used for free education. I mean, uh, free education is one of the reasons to increase the literacy rates, the, this could be an analysis, all right? Uh, okay, Najam, do you have a question? Yes. Yes, sir, sir, you have uh, section one and section two. Yes, I have read it. Okay. All right. Mm. Can it be to assert its dominance over foreign owned industries? Yes, definitely. For if you're talking about the nationalization of industries, then yes, it this could be a reason as well. Okay. All right, guys. So now some of the education reforms of Zulfikar Ali Bhutto were nationalization of institutions because they were trying to implement this free for all education system till the 10th grade and it was important for the government to have control of the institutions directly simple example if you guys ask the maybe if the government asks all the institutions in pakistan today okay you guys all the institutions will be providing free for all education till grade 10th so will that be possible do you guys think all the private schools in the country will accept that not at all okay so why because all of the the, the, the private companies the schools um, they have their own policies and they cannot follow such a free for, for all education system. So it is important for the government to take control of the institutions directly for such a policy to be implemented. Okay, now Zulfikar Ali Bhutto, we need to understand the reasons initially that why he came into the power in 1971. And then we'll move on to how, what all, 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 the, all of the events that caused the downfall of Zulfikar Ali Bhutto and then to the 14 mark questions. So number one, the first seven mark question from this chapter could be why did Bhutto come to power in 1971? Number one, the unpopularity of General Yahya Khan. A lot of the events that took place during the tenure of Yahya Khan added to the unpopularity. For example, the cyclones, the uh, flooding in East Pakistan at that time. Okay, and Pakistan, East Pakistan, uh, expected because the Bay of Bengal floods every year and during those flooding it was expected East Pakistani people were expecting help from West Pakistan right but that but West Pakistan ignored that and India on the other hand provided full support to the people of East, people of East Pakistan because obviously they were trying to exploit the conditions and they had their own reasons but this all of the, uh, the these events during the tenure of Yahya Khan added to his unpopularity and all of this enabled Zulfagar Ali Bhutto to form his own government the second reason was the 1971 war. Pakistan was going through a very unstable phase at that time. We, we, we faced a defeat in the 71 war. Bangladesh was separated from Pakistan. 90,000 soldiers and civilians of Pakistan were taken as prisoners. And people were blaming Yahya Khan and army for that defeat. So his rule was further weakened. This, got, this, this gave Bhutto an opportunity to form his own government. And then another reason was uh, the political uh, developments that were taking place during the time of Ayub Khan, all right? Uh, I mean, during that tenure, Zulfah Ali Bhutto had started gaining this popularity. Pakistan People's Party was formed during the tenure of Ayub Khan, during the 1960s, all right? So this, part, this political party had been campaigning for quite a few years on this slogan, food, shelter, and clothing. This is what they were campaigning on, and they, they managed to... Uh, gain a lot of voters and political supporters at that time. This is why in the elections, they were very successful and they formed, got a chance to form their government. Again, when you study the seven and 14 mark questions, guys, do, um, do read these lines that are in bold because these are the analysis. Uh, no, Isha Bhutto did not unify the syllabus. 
but he tried to implement the free for all education system. But we, this could, I mean, we, we can say that nationalization, because once the, in, the institutions are nationalized, the governments, they move on to these steps, unification of syllabus, curriculum, uh, costs, um, yeah, free for, uh, free for all education system. So this could be, uh, this could be correct, but you, the, the, there's no, uh, you could say clear um, policy as to if, if, I mean, if Kuto was trying to unify the syllabus or not. Okay, guys, the next question here is that why did Poto fall from power? Uh, again, three reasons for that as well. Number one, the style of ruling. We've already studied the FSF, Federal Security Force, and how the style of ruling of Poto was a little more towards the dictatorship style. People criticize, criticize that style of government. Um, the Federal Security Force was used against the political opponents. And uh, yeah, so this resulted in the unpopularity of Poto. Number two, the, all the opposition parties that formed this political Pakistan National Alliance. So PNA National Alliance was basically an alliance of all the opposition parties that decided to um, carry out these strikes and protests in the country against the government of Pakistan People's Party in Zulfikar Ali Bhutto. And they basically placed charges of vote rigging in the 1977 elections. So obviously the situation got so um, uh, out of control that it was important for the army to uh, basically uh, rule now. What is the difference between democracy and dictatorship? Democracy is a form of government that gives more power to the people. A general public elects, elects a government through a proper electoral process. And obviously people, they have more power. Uh, again, over the governments, whereas a dictatorship is a military government, it is sort of a martial law, where, uh, where one person, a military general, has all the power, and army decides for the country, army makes rules for the country. General public um, is basically, um, I mean, they, the general public doesn't get um, that amount of power, all right? So this is the major difference between democracy and dictatorship. So martial law is big, basically the, the dictatorship. Um, all right. Nationalization. Nationalization also became a reason for the downfall of Zulfikar Ali Bhutto because most of the industries and the institutions were nationalized, they were under the control of government, but government was not capable enough to provide the resources and support to all these industries and the institutions. The economy of Pakistan was so overburdenized already because of um, all the war and the military situation that the country was facing, we had just gotten out of a war in 71. We had a very uh, important war of 65 against India. The Kashmir issue was still going on. So all of the reasons caused the economy to be pretty unstable. And this is why it was very difficult for the economy to support the industries of Pakistan, the institutions of Pakistan, because you see, in nationalization, it's the sole responsibility of the government to bring in all the investors to manage all the finances and funding. So how can a crippling economy of like that, like of Pakistan could have actually managed to uh, sustain the nationalized industries and institutions? So this is why the, um, the, the, the declining economy, the declining institutions became a reason for the downfall of Zulfikar Ali Bhutto. Uh, okay, why was Zulfikar Ali Bhutto executed in 1979? Um, all right, guys, so because our time limit for the meeting is about to end, I will end the meeting right now and I will be sharing another link in the group so you guys can join that link as soon as this class ends. All right, is this all clear, guys? Uh, it's important that you guys join the next link as well because the class is not over yet, it's just that because the time duration of the meeting is about to end, I will have to end this meeting on purpose and send you another link. Do not disperse. Can you all maybe send an OK in the chat so I know that everyone is on board with me and you guys know that the, there's going to be a new link in the WhatsApp group right now.